Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It is Saturday morning. This is Bernanski's vlog. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Jeremy Bernanski with Bernanski's vlog. I've got my iced tea. I've got my iced tea here. I've got the box office report from this weekend. Let's go ahead and take a look at one news story then that dropped this morning. We are live right now. We are going to cover Friday's box office. So for this weekend's box office, uh, on these Facebook Live sessions, we do like to cover the weekend box office. So what does that mean? That means that this is pretty impressive, as you'll hear in a minute. But I'm not going to give any spoilers, so don't worry. In theory, that film should have done gangbusters. This movie is so much fun. I think the rewatchability factor is super high. Wow, this was actually a fun time. I'm on board. Sign me up. Game over. If you're watching this on replay, thank you. All right, let's just get into it. Number five, number four, and number three, number two, and number one. Good morning. It is Saturday morning. This is Bernanski's vlog Facebook live stream. And today we're going to cover up my initial thoughts after seeing the Justice League movie last night. Also, we're going to cover Friday's box office report and one or two bits of news that dropped today and just a little bit this past week. So we'll go ahead and give everybody a second to just pop in because I just dropped the announcement on Twitter that we are going live. So we'll give it a second. I've got my iced tea here. And let us go ahead and get started. All right. So for Friday's box office, before we get into the Justice League spoiler, non-spoiler review, the spoiler review is going up on Monday's show. So stay tuned for that 10 a.m. PST on Monday. Lots of spoilers in that. Did I mention it's going to be spoiler-filled? This will be spoiler-filled. If you have not seen Justice League, you are not going to want to watch that review. You have been warned. Okay, so let's jump in to the Facebook, or let's jump into the uh, Friday box office report here. So coming in at number five, we go from five to one. So coming in at number five, we have Daddy's Home, or Daddy's Home 2 at 3930000 Number four, Murder on the Orient Express for four million seventy-five thousand. Thor Ragnarok at five million eight hundred one thousand. Uh, number two is Wonder at nine million six hundred fifty thousand. And then coming in at number one is Justice League with thirty-eight million eight hundred thousand. So overall, I'm not too surprised uh, with Friday's report. Uh, Wonder being the drama that it is, it does have some big names in it. So we should have just automatically assumed that that's going to pull in some money just because of who's in that film. So congratulations on beating Thor Ragnarok. So that was pretty good. Uh, but for Justice League, there's a lot of talk online about the film itself and the amount of money it's making. And I just want to kind of do a little compare and contrast here real quick with uh, what's out right now. So Thor Ragnarok, and then also take a look at what its predecessors did in the DC extended universe. So Thor Ragnarok's Friday was when it first came out was 46,470,936. So it justice league really isn't that far away from what Thor did. And Thor was, it was coming off of the dark world, which if you watched my uh, MCU breakdown, you saw that Thor, the dark world was my least favorite of all of the Marvel movies, but it wasn't necessarily following that. It had a lot of other films that Marvel had done that still maintained the excitement and kind of, I believe, kind of wore down the stink of Thor The Dark World. So I think Thor Ragnarok, when it came out, it was sitting pretty well because of everything that had just dropped in theaters before it. Um, so to see the Justice League performing just slightly under that, I, I don't think is a bad thing. I think that's a positive. But let's take a look at the other films in the DC universe uh, for their Friday numbers and just see how it's faring. So we'll start with Man of Steel. So Man of Steel, when it came out on, on its Friday, it was $44,013,367. So Justice League, just a little shy of that again. Man of Steel, obviously starting up this whole thing, a controversial film if you're a Superman fan or if you're a DC Comics fan. Uh, I enjoyed it after I was able to sit on the film for a while and think about what the film was offering and this new Superman they were bringing. Uh, but to see that uh, Justice League is performing still light, slightly under that, that's a little concerning. Um, and then we have Suicide Squad, which came out at 64,893,248. 
Uh, Batman versus Superman, uh, 81,558,505. Wonder Woman, 38 million, 247 and 254. So Justice League is performing the better than Wonder Woman, uh, but Wonder Woman had some legs on it. And that movie just kept making money, making money and making money. And it's actually received a couple of awards for how much money it's made. Not awards like trophies, but like, hey, congratulations, you guys are now the number one for these categories. So I, I think with Justice League, I think it might have the same effect or Wonder Woman's effect, the long legs might work with Justice League because I actually had a pretty good time with this film, surprisingly. Uh, when I walked into the theater, I was like, all right, let's just get this trash fest over with. And when I walked out of the theater, I, I was like, wow, this was actually a fun time. And we'll get to that in a minute. So I think that Justice League, with enough people coming out and going, actually, we don't understand the Rotten Tomatoes score. And we get that there was a lot of trouble leading up to the release of this film with the production and the writing and everything else. But the product that they delivered us is the Justice League. It's a different version of the Justice League than you're probably used to in the comics, but it's still the Justice League at its core. So I think after a couple people see it and they start talking about it and they go, no, look, I saw it. It's actually pretty good. You should definitely check it out. I think it'll have some legs. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I think we'll actually see it make money over the long haul. Uh, but obviously this initial out the gate isn't looking too hot. So I don't think we have any cause for concern as fans of these characters. Uh, as long as we're spreading the word that, look, this actually is a fun movie. It's entertaining and it is the Justice League. So go check it out and check it out on the biggest screen possible. So for the movie itself, my initial thoughts is the story is really thin. They don't do a lot of character development, but they do character development enough that we understand what's going on and who these people are, why they're reluctant to join up and be a team. Also, their reasons for changing their mind and joining the team. Also, the bad guy, I can't really get into why I liked the bad guy because that ventures into the spoiler territory. So you're going to want to check back on Monday for my review of that to hear why I actually did like Steppenwolf. Um, I didn't like the look of Steppenwolf, the weird computer-generated images, the CGI uh, just didn't do it for me. But the villain itself, as a villain, I enjoyed. And again, I can't get into why because that's spoiler territory. So check back Monday at the brand new episode for my reasons why I actually like the villain. Uh, also, the the overall camaraderie of the team, I actually liked. Because it felt like in some of the fight scenes where you see the Justice League actually working together, it felt like something right out of the comics where you would see them saying like, okay, you can do this, you're fast, Barry. You're the Flash, so get people in and out. Like, that's your job. I'm going to do this because I'm Batman and I don't have any superpowers. Aquaman, you go do this. Like, it worked really well uh, as far as, like, team unity and them working together to solve the problem that was Steppenwolf. So, overall, uh, the, the, the movie it delivered, it's a thin story. You get a, a little bit of background, not a lot, but enough that it makes sense. Um, and the CGI is terrible. There's no way to sugarcoat that. The special effects in this movie are atrocious. Uh, but that doesn't derail any of the fun I had watching this film. And as just a heads up, when you go see this, stay until the very, very end because there's two post credit scenes. So you're going to get one mid and then right before they turn the lights on in the theater, you're going to get a second one. Um, now, if you have been watching the show, or you've been following me on social media for any time, you'll know who I have two villains that I particularly enjoy. Both of them um, are Batman-esque, Riddler being one, Deathstroke being the other. Uh, so when you watch this movie, you might be sitting there going, wow, this probably made Jeremy very happy. And you would be correct. It did make me very happy. In fact, it got a loud verbal response from me in the theater uh, at a certain part in the movie. So you're going to want to check that out. It, again, big screen, bad special effects, good story, and we get the Justice League. So check it out. Um, just real quick, before we sign off, I want to go ahead and just let everybody know that The Incredibles 2 just dropped the brand new teaser trailer this morning. So check that out. It's really short, but it is fun. We get to see Jack-Jack back in action. He's still a baby like he was in the first one. And we get to see that his superpowers have been kind of developing a little bit more, which is pretty cool. Also, 
Uh, Deadpool 2, I know I posted that online. I have watched that trailer a number of times. It cracks me up. I'm so happy that the marketing machine is back for Deadpool. And if you go on their YouTube page, if you're watching this on the replay, I will throw the links for The Incredibles 2 and Deadpool 2 in the show notes on YouTube. So if you're watching this on replay, thank you. Check out the show notes. But if you look at the show notes in the Deadpool 2, it actually gives a synopsis for the movie that makes no sense. The trailer makes no sense. I cannot wait for Deadpool 2. So check that out. Uh, thanks you, everybody uh, who has popped in and has joined this Facebook live stream. We're going to go ahead and get out of here because i got to record a couple more segments for Monday's episode. Uh, but if you guys are watching this on replay, thank you so much for watching this on replay. I appreciate it. And we will see you guys on Monday at 10 a.m. PST for a brand new episode of Bernanski's Vlog. Have a great weekend, everybody. Go see Justice League. Hi, everybody. I'm Jeremy Bernanski, and you've just finished watching a Facebook Live replay. Now, if you enjoyed that, you may also want to check out the weekly show playlist, as well as the movie news playlist, which covers just the news segments from every Monday's episode. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and click that subscribe. We'll see you guys next Monday right here on YouTube for a brand new episode of Bernanski's Vlog at 10 a.m. PST. Have a great week. Take care.